What's going on guys? Welcome back to 4 Gaming. We've got another guide here. Today we're going to be talking about the second encounter challenge uh, in the Garden of Salvation. So I've seen a bunch of other guides and this strategy is definitely a little bit different and I think it's the easiest, most efficient way to get it done. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy. If you guys are looking for more content like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, we got a lot more stuff coming. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the challenge for the second encounter is called A Link to a Chain, and basically everyone has to tether at the exact same time. If one of your six players misses a tether and doesn't get enlightened at the same time, you will fail the encounter. The key here is that you can split up and tether on separate confluxes, it just has to be at the exact same time. So in order to do this, we're going to split up into two main teams marked as red and blue in this diagram. You will also split into three sub teams of two, which will work together to clear plates and tether throughout the encounter. Two players from each of the big teams will make up team one and two, while the odd man out will pair up to make the third team. So one of the biggest mistakes I see people do is killing the first angelic and then all tethering together at the beginning. This is a huge mistake. Instead, the team at home plate is going to leave their angelic up while teams two and three split out to first and second base. As the teams make their way out to first and third base, they're going to slay all the adds except for the angelics. Once everything else is dead, you'll make a call to kill the angelics and all three angelics on home, first, and third base will go down at the exact same time. The reason that we wait to kill all three angelics at the same time is because killing the first angelic actually initiates the spawning of the shielded enemies. Until you kill an angelic, no shielded enemies that require enlightenment to kill will spawn. So in waiting to kill all three at the same time, you've already cleared out three plates before you've ever even had to worry about a tether, giving you a huge head start on this encounter. Once all three angelics are down on these plates, it's time for your first tether. So in order to tether, you're gonna have everyone on your team stack underneath the box and then turn it on. This will link the tether to all the players that need to be involved on each plate. Then after each side has confirmed that they're linked up and ready to go, you'll do a three, two, one countdown and step into range of the conflux. This should ensure that everyone tethers at the exact same time and will not cause challenge to fail. If you see challenge to fail in the bottom left, then you'll have to wipe and try again. Once everyone has enlightenment, it's time to move on and conquer the last plate. You'll have two people from the right team and one person from the left team move on and clear plate three as quickly as possible. One player from home will also rotate over to first base, leaving one person on home, first, and third base to defend. These players' jobs is to defend their base and then stack on the home conflux. Every round, there will be two waves of adds with three small vex and one minotaur. Once you've killed these two waves, or basically two minotaurs, you'll know that that's it for your side, and you'll go to stack at home to get ready for the next tether. Once you see in the bottom left that enemies subside, that means it's time to initiate another tether. At this point for the second tether, the three players that went to the second base should have it cleared and should be ready to go. Once again, both teams will stack underneath of their boxes and activate it, getting the tether ready between all three players. Once both sides call that they are ready, you will step into the conflux range and sync the tethers at the same time. From here on out, it's very rinse and repeat. Two players from home will move to first base and clear the waves as quickly as possible. Two players from second will go to third base and clear those waves. Once again, there's only two waves of adds with a couple small vex and one minotaur each. Once you've killed the two minotaurs and the small adds that are with them, you'll know that that side is complete and you can head back to your tether base. The change up each round will come from which plate gets the angelics. Whatever plate gets the angelics, two players from that plate's team will head there and defeat them as quickly as possible. The third player on that team will clear out the opposite plate. It is extremely important that whenever the angelics are discovered on a specific plate, it is called out immediately so that the teams can coordinate properly to kill them quickly. By default, since two people will be going over to first or third base for each team respectively, it is important that this call out is made quickly so that one of the two people can come back and assist either home or second base if those are where the angelic spawn. For example, if we just finished a tether round and we send out our players to their plates and we discover that angelics have spawned on home plate, immediately one of the players that went over to first base is going to come back and assist with the angelics on home while the other player finishes out first base on their own. This should be rather simple if your team is organized and saves heavy and supers to kill angelics. 
But in my group, I also found it helpful to go over and assist the other team in their angelic plate if we have the time. Since the off team that doesn't get an angelic plate only has to kill two waves on each plate, I would go over and assist the other team with their angelic plate while my two teammates cleared out home and first base. So quickly head back to your plate, get under the cube, and be ready to tether once the other team with angelics is ready. Once you have completed four rounds of this and had angelics on each plate, the center will open up as normal. It is easy to get excited here and start celebrating, but please remember that all six players must tether on the inside conflux as well. So make sure you have one person designated to shoot and call it out once everyone is lined up. Please take the time to line up. I would hate to see you guys lose here at the end. Once you've completed two rounds here on the center conflux, you will have completed the encounter and two chests will spawn on the center column. Yeah, so there you guys go. Hopefully this helped. If it did help, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment if you guys have any more questions and be sure to share this with all your Destiny friends so that way when you guys hop in the raid, everyone knows what to do. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. I did it. Who's the best in the game?